Now let's look at the formal definition of a limit. We can thank Weierstrass for this. So we have, if I have a limit, x going to x0 of f of x equal to L, we read this as, in mathematical terms, so this is the Greek, for all epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero, such that if x is not equal to x zero and absolute value of x minus x zero is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon. Okay, we'll pull that apart in a second, but what this really says is, points near x zero are gonna map under f to points near L. Okay, that's all we're doing with a limit. It's just this limit of starting out close, when you hit it with f, you wind up close. Let's decode what's happening with the absolute value here and put some pictures to this. All right, so absolute value of x minus x zero, less than delta. What's happening here? The way I decode this is, I'm just gonna take delta, put a minus sign on it, and then I get an inequality on the other side. I can add x zero to each term. And when I do that, you'll note, we're just talking about x that lives in the interval centered at x zero with movement by delta on each side. So I'll write it like this. This is our x-axis, and that's our interval right here that we're talking about with this. I'll put a hole where x zero is because we don't really care what's actually happening at x zero when we take the limit. So all of our x are gonna live in here. On the other side, we have f of x minus l, absolute value strictly less than epsilon, and that's gonna be the same deal. I'm gonna take my epsilon, put a minus sign on it, put it on the other side. That lets me remove the absolute value signs, and then I'm gonna add l to each term. That's gonna give me the interval, our f of x, we want to live in the interval centered at l with epsilon on each side. So I'll draw the y-axis over here, that's our interval, and then we're saying our f of x is gonna to have to live in this interval here. Okay, if you want a picture with the x and the y like we normally see it, that's gonna be like this. Okay, what's this mean? So what we have here, this is a test. This for all epsilon bigger than zero, that means somebody comes to you with an epsilon, say a half or a quarter or an eighth, doesn't matter. What you need to do is produce a delta that's bigger than zero, so that this delta interval over here maps inside of their epsilon interval on the y-axis. So that's the game. We're trying to squeeze an interval into another interval when we hit it with f. So let's take a look at an example to see what's happening numerically. So we'll go with limit x going to two of x squared is equal to four, and somebody's gonna come at me with epsilon equal to a half. So on the y-axis, we're gonna be looking at the target interval of L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. So since epsilon's a half and our L is equal to four, we're looking at three and a half, four and a half. That's gonna be this thing here that I've blacked in. So we wanna get an epsilon. So if I take a small enough neighborhood of two, it winds up pushing up and over into my target interval under F, which is X squared. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for now. I need to find a delta so that if I take the small interval around two, goes up and inside that interval. And note, we don't care about x equal to two. We could throw that away. In this case, it won't matter, but sometimes you do wanna get rid of the um, actual point you're taking the limit at. So, how do you do this? Well, when somebody actually hands you a number, your best bet is just to just take a really small number, see if it works, and then keep going with smaller and smaller numbers until you get something. That's if you think it's gonna work. If you don't think it's gonna work, well, then you're gonna to have to go to something else. So my guess is gonna be, how about delta equal to 0.1? So that's gonna be on my neighborhood of two. I'm gonna go 0.1 in each direction, so we're looking at the interval 1.9 to 2.1, and I throw away the 0.2. I hit this with x squared, and where do I wind up? That's gonna to go to 3.61 to 4.41, and you'll notice that this interval here is gonna live inside my target interval. My target interval is going from three and a half to four and a half, and all of this stuff is landing squarely inside of it. So that's gonna mean somebody gives me this epsilon, I return the delta 0.1, that delta is gonna pass their test, and so 
we're good to go. They may come at me with another epsilon, but then we worry about that for each epsilon they keep throwing at us.